Apple will hold its WWDC keynote on June 5th, where CEO Tim Cook and gang are expected to announce the next major version of iPhone software, iOS 17. Now, while rumors point to the software update being overshadowed by new Mac hardware and a long rumored and yet to be announced AR VR headset, that doesn't mean that the next version of iOS won't have significant features. But here are all the improvements and additions I hope Apple makes with iOS 17. Before I jump into my list, let's start with two giant iOS 17 rumors. And the first is that iOS 17 could include a feature that lets you view more items on your lock screen. And this is according to Bloomberg. The lock screen would reportedly show calendar appointments, weather, and notifications similar to Android devices circa 2019 and smart displays like the Amazon Echo Show. This would follow on the heels of iOS 16, which introduced a major overhaul of the iPhone's lock screen that made it far more customizable. And the second rumor is that with iOS 17, iPhone owners could gain the ability to sideload apps. And this is according to a different Bloomberg report. Now, sideloading means that you can download an app on your iPhone without using Apple's App Store. The potential inclusion is likely meant to ensure compliance with new European regulations due to kick in next year. Now, while those rumors are fun to ponder, they can be a distraction from many other iOS aspects that I think Apple needs to add or improve. So let's get to it. Visual Lookup launched with iOS 15 and could recognize objects in your photos, such as plants, food, landmarks, and even pets. In iOS 16, Visual Lookup expanded to let you lift an object out of a photo or PDF by tapping and holding, essentially creating a sticker that you can share with others. But there's a catch. Visual Lookup only works after you take a photo. But I want it to do more straight from the camera viewfinder. So if the camera is open and it's pointed at flowers, I can tap on the Visual Lookup icon and see what kind of flowers they are without taking a photo. Now you can do this with live text on the iPhone and Google Lens already does something similar on Android phones. Now I, I realize this isn't a radical change, but it would just streamline things a bit. If you own an Apple TV, you have no doubt lost the tiny minimalist aluminum remote control. Now fortunately, you can use a virtual remote on your iPhone to do nearly everything the physical remote does, except change the volume. Now, Apple, please, please just add a volume button to the iPhone's Apple TV remote. Okay, so, so technically when you use the Apple TV remote on your iPhone or iPad, you can press the physical volume buttons on your device to control the volume, but this doesn't work on all TVs or audio receivers like mine. And I gather there are many people like me who just want the virtual remote to mimic the same button layout on their iPhone screen, including one for the volume. If you're an Apple Watch user, you understand the convenience of recording a workout. But if you aren't wearing your Apple Watch or you don't own one, there isn't a way to record basic exercises like walking, running, or cycling on your iPhone without a third-party app. I'd like to see Apple expand the fitness app so that you can record workouts even without a Fitness Plus membership. It's time for Apple to revisit the iPhone's camera app. Now, for years, this app was the gold standard of simplicity, offering a see what you get preview for photos, videos, and effects with minimal easy to navigate controls and modes. But as Apple added more functionality, especially for Pro Raw photos and ProRes video recording on iPhone Pro models, the camera app has started to feel cramped. It tries to remain a one size fits all app at the expense of higher end features like manual camera controls. I'd like Apple to make a separate pro camera app in the same vein, it created a standalone Apple Music Classical app. Just as classical music was a challenge to categorize, search, and discover with the default Apple Music app, the pro camera app could be a place for creative types to access camera controls, settings, and features beyond the basic camera app. Sony has been quite successful with a similar approach on its Xperia 1 and 5 series phones, and Samsung has a separate expert raw app to complement its main one. Now it's Apple's turn. 
If you have an Apple Card, you've got new experience, one of the best mobile financial experiences on any phone today. Apple's signature credit card lives virtually in the wallet app. At first glance, it appears like any other Apple Pay card, but when you tap its digital avatar, you can see the card's balance, rewards, upcoming payment, and transactions. I'd like Apple to open up that functionality to non-Apple credit cards. If your Bank of America credit card is in Apple Pay and you have the Bank of America app on your phone, wouldn't it be great to access similar functionality in the wallet app? I mean, expanding access to this information would be convenient for iPhone owners and could bolster Apple Pay and the iPhone's wallet as serious financial tools. Widgets on the lock screen and home screen can do two things. Show information like the weather and launch the corresponding app when tapped like the weather app. Widgets haven't changed much since Apple introduced them with iOS 14 in 2020. And it's time for a refresh. What if there was a middle ground where you could use the podcast widget like a mini podcast player or order your favorite burrito bowl straight from Chipotle's widget? I mean, adding more functionality to widgets could make it much easier to multitask on the iPhone. Now, I've been doing these iOS wish lists for many years, and one addition that's made my roundup every year is Apple Pencil support for the iPhone Pro Max models. The 6.7 inch screen isn't that much smaller than the 8.3 inch screen on the iPad mini, but one supports the Apple Pencil and the other doesn't. Also, if iOS 17 did add pencil support, Apple could make a third smaller version of its stylus and call it the Apple Pencil Mini. And maybe it could attach to the back of the iPhone Pro Max using MagSafe. Earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal ran a series of stories about how a thief that steals your iPhone and knows its passcode can lock you out of the most important parts of your digital life. Now, the scope of these crimes are not widespread, but they are more common than you might think. At the core of the issue is a balance between security and ease of access. The same tools Apple put in place to help people who get locked out of their devices and accounts are being used by savvy criminals to lock people out of their phone and accounts while gaining access to their money and services. I truly don't think there is an easy way for Apple to fix the issue, but I do hope with iOS 17, Apple takes a moment to reconsider the impact these tools can have on people and maybe even offer other features or tools that could foil thieves at the heart of these crimes. Uh, kind of like what Apple did with AirTags. At the end of the day, I am so excited for WWDC this year. And while I do hope there is a fancy cool AR VR headset, my heart is holding out for iOS 17 and all its new features. But now I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about iOS 17? What are some features you want to see Apple add to it? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more CNET videos, make sure you subscribe. Later.